Ever wondered how traffic is controlled in a network? It's a question that might seem simple on the surface, but the answer is a complex blend of technology and strategy. The heart of network traffic control lies in the ability to manage data packets as they travel from one point to another. This management is crucial in ensuring efficient, effective and secure data transmission. Now, let's introduce a key player in the world of network traffic control, access control lists, or ACLs for short. These are the traffic cops of the digital highway, directing the flow of data packets based on a set of predefined rules. Imagine a busy intersection during peak hours. Without traffic signals or a hands-on traffic officer, chaos would ensue. Similarly, without ACLs, network traffic would be a free-for-all, leading to inefficiencies and potential security risks. ACLs are essentially ordered sets of rules that filter incoming and outgoing packets on an interface. They determine which types of traffic should be allowed or blocked at device interfaces, serving as gatekeepers to the network. There are four different types of ACLs, reflexive, extended, dynamic, and standard. Each has its unique role and use in controlling network traffic. The mystery of network traffic control is a fascinating one, involving a delicate balance of rules and decisions that keep our data flowing seamlessly and securely. Stay with me as we dive deep into the world of access control lists and uncover their role in network traffic control. So, what exactly is an access control list or ACL? Well, imagine you are a gatekeeper of a grand castle, deciding who can enter and who cannot based on a set of rules. An access control list, or ACL for short, acts in a similar way, but within the realm of network traffic. It's an ordered collection of rules used to filter traffic, like a digital gatekeeper, if you will. Let's delve a little deeper. In the world of network engineering, data is constantly being sent and received, but not all data packets are created equal. Some are priority, some are routine, and unfortunately, some are malicious. This is where our digital gatekeeper, the ACL, steps in. ACLs can be configured on network devices to control both incoming and outgoing traffic on an interface. They scrutinize each data packet, checking it against the set rules. If a packet meets the criteria of a rule, the corresponding action is taken, whether to permit or deny that traffic. But here's the catch. The rules in an ACL are processed in order, from top to bottom. Once a packet matches a rule, no further rules are checked. It's a first come, first serve kind of system. So to summarize, an ACL is a powerful tool in network traffic control, filtering data packets based on a set of rules and deciding which ones get the green light and which ones don't. Now that we know what an ACL is and what it does, let's explore the different types of ACLs. Did you know there are four different types of access control lists, each with its own unique use? Let's start with reflexive ACLs. These are interesting because they work a bit like a mirror. They're used to control traffic based on sessions. Imagine you're a network engineer and you want to allow traffic to flow out of your network, but limit the traffic that comes in. Reflexive ACLs would be your go-to tool. They create temporary rules that allow return traffic from connections that were initiated from inside the network. Once the session ends, poof, the rule disappears. It's like magic, but with network traffic. Now, let's move on to extended ACLs. These are a bit more complex and offer more flexibility. They can filter traffic by source and destination IP address, port, protocol, and even parts of the data within a packet. This makes them incredibly versatile. As an example, consider a company that wants to limit access to a specific server. With an extended ACL, they could create rules that allow only certain IP addresses to connect to that server, and even specify which ports they can use. They can also block specific types of traffic, like ICMP, to prevent ping requests. The level of control is impressive, isn't it? Looking at these two types of ACLs, it's clear they offer different levels of control. Reflexive ACLs are great for simple, session-based control, while extended ACLs allow for detailed, granular traffic filtering. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Misconfiguring an extended ACL can lead to unintended blocks or even network-wide issues. So we have reflexive and extended ACLs, but we're not done yet. There are two more types to explore. So stay tuned as we delve deeper into the world of access control lists. Ready to learn about the remaining two types of ACLs? We've already talked about reflexive and extended ACLs. Now let's dive into the world of dynamic and standard ACLs. 
To start off, dynamic ACLs are quite sophisticated. They're also known as lock and key ACLs because of their unique characteristic. This type of ACL provides temporary access to network resources. The access is granted only when a user authenticates themselves, hence the term lock and key. Once the session ends, the access is automatically revoked. This is an excellent feature for enhancing security because it ensures that only authenticated users can gain access to the network. Now let's contrast this with standard ACLs. These are the simplest types of ACLs and are used to control traffic based solely on the source IP address. They either permit or deny an entire protocol suite, which means they lack the granularity of control offered by the other types of ACLs. However, their simplicity makes them quick to implement and easy to manage. So, how do these two types of ACLs compare to reflexive and extended ACLs? Well, while reflexive ACLs control traffic based on sessions and extended ACLs provide more granular control by considering both source and destination IP addresses, as well as the protocol type, dynamic and standard ACLs have their own unique strengths. Dynamic ACLs offer enhanced security through user authentication and standard ACLs provide a quick and easy way to control traffic based on the source IP address. Each type of ACL has its own use case and is suited for different scenarios. It's like having a toolbox with different tools, each designed for a specific task. You wouldn't use a hammer to screw in a bolt, right? Similarly, you need to choose the right type of ACL based on your specific network requirements. And there we have it, the four types of ACLs, but how do we summarize all this information? ACLs can seem complex, but they don't have to be. Let's summarize the key points. Access control lists, or ACLs for short, are at the heart of network traffic control. These ordered sets of rules are designed with one primary objective, to filter traffic. They act as gatekeepers, deciding which packets can pass through an interface and which ones are denied entry. Whether it's incoming or outgoing traffic, ACLs are the arbiters of flow. But what makes ACLs so fascinating is their versatility. They're not just one-size-fits-all solutions. Instead, they come in four distinct types, each with its own unique role and function. Standard ACLs, for example, are the most basic form. They filter traffic based purely on the source IP address. They're like bouncers at a club, checking IDs at the door. Simple, yet effective. Contrast that with extended ACLs. These are the more sophisticated cousins of standard ACLs. They don't just consider the source IP address, but also the destination IP and even the type of protocol being used. It's like having a bouncer who also checks your invitation and the dress code. Then we have dynamic ACLs, which are a little more flexible. They allow for temporary access, creating a secure, authenticated session for a specific user. It's akin to a VIP pass that expires after a certain time. And finally, reflexive ACLs. These are the smart ones able to track sessions and apply rules based on the flow of traffic. Imagine a bouncer who can remember every face and adapt to changing situations. These four types of ACLs, each with their unique characteristics and functions, provide a diverse range of options for network traffic control. They allow for precise control, flexibility and intelligence in managing traffic flow. Next time you think about network traffic control, remember the crucial role of ACLs and the diversity they bring to the table.